This episode is brought to you by Vertigon. Vertigon. Get rid of all your vertigo with Vertigon. <laughs> that is proof that Marcus does like chicken. I like chicken. I like chicken. I love chickens. You know, I thought a lot of things about you, Nick, my whole life. I thought okay. you would become so many things, and you've become pretty much the person that I thought, but I never thought you would have a girlfriend that's a stormtrooper. Hi, I'm Marcus. I'm Atrex. And I'm Nick. <laughs> we are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. right we are working class nerds the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information today is thursday august 24th 2023 and you can find this 212 podcast on apple podcast buzzsprout google podcast stitcher spotify and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far far away you can also find every single working class nerds episode on youtube just search for the working class nerds podcast or go to youtube.com slash at working class nerds click on playlist click on working class nerds and boom every episode past and present right there right at your fingertips and you can watch me play video games tuesdays saturdays and sunday nights at kick.com slash marcus b814 you can watch me play video games every Friday night at 9.30 Eastern Time, p.m., that is, at twitch.tv slash A underscore Atrex. And you can watch me play video games almost every single Monday night at 8.30 <coughs> p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash NickVern51. One thing is for sure, we're all on the social media. I'm at MarcusB814. I am at Atrex underscore A. And I'm at Nick Vern. That's today's CKV and in this week's episode... Nick, who is me, is back and less dizzy than ever, uh, and I have a whole hell of a lot to catch up with you guys about, because I haven't been on here in like three weeks, because we were on, I did the math, even yeah. though I'm not good at it, I did the math, uh, I wasn't here two episodes ago, because me and Marcus were at the preseason football game, and then last week, I was, it was all vertigo all the time. You were vertigo on, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, had I a vertigina, oh and, <laughs> and then th th the third week... He was on vacation. Oh, was that really? Oh, yeah, that's no, right. No, I wasn't. That was there two weeks are. before that. Yeah. No, I was not. Because, no, August 3rd, I was not on vacation. Oh, yeah, so Nick has officially not streamed in 18 weeks. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> it's been like it was, six or seven years. I was on years. two different pot shows between missing one. I was gone the 13th. Well, but anyways. Anyway, but you know. know that ruins your, it, your, your narrative. No, no, no. The the narrative is true. Nick's now only be able to come on the podcast if TK four two seven gives him uh, commanding uh, permission. Permission, yeah. yeah. Got to write out an imperial form, get yeah. all the proper signatures and stamps and documentation. <laughs> Does she make you dress in like stormtrooper blue, like dress blues, like the nice outfit, not the no. typical armor? Do you have to salute? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is, wait a minute. Wait, is TK four two is is TK four two seven? Yeah, short for phasma. No, short for phasma. Like yeah, is like, she phasma? Yes. Oh no, no. She's your commanding officer. No, I don't know who. Uh, I don't know what Star Wars character she would kind of look like. I don't know of any. Look like it's how she acts. Nobody actually looks like a Star Wars character. Well, I mean, yeah. She look kind of looks I, like I, I don't know. I don't know. I, Hayden Christensen looks pretty similar to Anakin. I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I could like be wrong, me. But. If Good you're point. talking about what I look like or what I act like in a Star Wars character, I'm pretty spot on to a droid. I would say I act either like C-3PO or Jar Jar. That would be my like sh on the spot. See, role. you are nothing like C-3PO. I'm annoying as fuck. Yeah, but in a totally different flavor. C-3PO is trying to, like, follow all the rules, stay safe with everything all the time. 
You're yeah, like I would I would be C three PO if anything. That Mar- like, yes. St- constantly like no, like don't do that. That's well, yes, a stupid no. idea. This is right. let's you gotta go do it here. the right way. Yeah. Over here, this thing. Go, let's so, go. So okay. Yeah. So who would I be? Who is my Star Wars doppelganger? You're a lot closer to like Han Solo or something. That's what I was thinking You're like too. Wheeling and dealing, scoundrel, getting shit done. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like I, that's not a that's not an exact match either. Uh, you know what I mean? Maybe Poe or something? Or would I be more like a Lando? That's, that's, uh, there's a Lando f- flavor for sure. Not all Lando, because you're not, like, I feel like Lando's exclusively sleazy all the time. You know see, what I mean? Nick, I would see you as Vader, right? Because, like, you're powerful and, like, you know what you want, but yet as soon as you have a girlfriend, they become the Emperor and they <laughs> rule you. <laughs> Out there, out there slaying younglings, man. Yeah, they're slaying I, I knew it. As soon as you started that, I was like, all right, how is he tying this back to TK427? So yeah. Here we go. The web is being spun. And Perfect. everybody on here, if you guys want to be a doll, go to kick.com slash TK427 and just follow that channel. They'll never, ever stream, but it'll be hilarious. Let's try to get like 10 followers on kick just to TK427. Yeah. That shit would be hilarious. That would be very funny. There you go. Um. <laughs> yeah. What the hell were we talking about? It doesn't matter. Star Wars character. Oh, yeah. hey, did you guys see that they're remaking Half Life, and they're putting like ray tracing in it? They're like yeah, remaking. Yeah, they're remaking. Yeah, Half Life Two. They're remaking Half Life Two. Um, <laughs> it's like one of the greatest first person shooters ever made. That in the first Half Life. Yeah, that's yeah. I did not see that, but that's cool. I've never played it's, it because it's, it's an it's RTX just... remix project from uh, Nvidia. It looks like. Ah, that I do not have the soundboard queued up. Don't do it now. It's way too late, dude. We or like yeah, I know. Can't like you have to either be on it or off of it. Like our podcast is gonna fail because of your bad soundboard fucking activity. You know what I mean? There you go. I feel like. It was like the wrong time for that. You like there was no need it. for that. I feel I like we need this. We need this like jabber time of the podcast to catch up on all three of us before we ask Atrax what he's doing. Because if yeah. not, it's going to be like interruptions galore and it's just going to be like. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> like, A lot of you that. need to like you need to like add new stuff to the soundboard. Like your soundboard yeah. stuff. Your soundboard game is actually like weak. You've been using the same soundboard. Good. Yeah, it used to be good 112 episodes ago. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I guess. I, I haven't. I, the only thing I've added is the back of the ranch and the DJ. I mean, uh, like the air horn sound. I haven't. You added should add. Anything. You should add DJ Diddle to it. Okay. We need. Are, we need like a Marcus interruption one. What does that <laughs> sound? <laughs> interruption oh, yeah, alert. No. Well, let's hear it. Uh, Atrox. What would it? What would it? What would that alert sound like? Uh, it would probably be something like, oh, well, dude, hold on. So actually, what <laughs> I've be, been thinking. Or, or it'd be like, wait, 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 explain his thing. Hold on, we, hold on. Can we just so, go back to that thing from five minutes ago? Because <laughs> I was like, on my phone and not right, listening, so, and now I want to talk honestly, about that point. Honestly? <laughs> but sometimes I need to finish my thought, because if I don't, it's going to bother me the rest of the show. You have notes in front of you. Just type something. Yeah. But that's Just, not fun. We can I see like it. an open dialogue. Like, I don't like to be restricted by notes. Notes are a guide. Why do you think I buy the strat guide? I read it like a sentence and then think I know how to beat the game, okay? Yeah, that's clear, uh, as evidenced by you playing not Destiny. <laughs> no. Right? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. You're also bad at Destiny. Let me let me clarify. I'm bad at Destiny. <laughs> well, I'm bad at Destiny, but like oh, I only man. have room in my life for one main game. I That's know. it. But I when I play other side games, whether I play them for three weeks or not, I play them. Like I watched the preview of that new uh, Space Marine game. I'm actually really excited for that. That I think might be yeah. my first single player game that I'm gonna play because it's gonna be in the universe that I'm reading books in and. Like it it'll like be a Gears fun of war. Yeah, exactly. It does. 
Um, and, it's, it's a, and I can't imagine the campaign's going to be longer than ten hours. It's supposed Probably to be. Uh, it's supposed to be co-op too, because uh, Fernando wants me to play this with him. He's like, dude, a co-op like uh, campaign for like an RPG, like that's perfect. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be as much of an RPG as Gears of War is an RPG. Yeah, this is not uh, super an RPG. You know what I mean? I don't. Uh, I don't know how to check if it's if it's co-op or not. Hmm. It should tell you on the Steam page. That's what I, yeah, that's what I got open. But wh- where would it be tagged? Oh, online. On the right. Yep. yep. I yeah. just didn't. I didn't look with my good eyes. Dude, I'm telling you right now. You yeah. know, I've never worked at a job where, like, I work with a lot of people. You know what okay. I mean? And now my job is around a lot of people. So like, it's always been like me, the boss, and people that work for me, right? And okay. my stupid jokes, they'll either laugh at me or just tell me I'm an idiot. But then when you work, now I'm working in a bigger company, and I'm not talking about where, but the people I work with, some of them are awesome. But some of the, sh- like, I want sometimes say to myself, like, the comedy that comes out of it, I'm like, I've missed this my whole life. Because, yeah. like, I don't, like, these guys I work with from, let's call it 7 to 3.30, and then we go home, and they have their own lives. Like, it mm-hmm. used to be like, it's my business and they're leaving my business and it's my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But some of the shit that comes out of these guys mouth is hilarious. And then there's the guys who have been there like 30 plus years and they just have zero fucking filter. And the shit that comes out of their mouth, you're like, damn. And you just literally roll over. Your... I'll get... Can I give an example? Yeah. All right. So today. To so today. The floor no, no. is yours. All right. So today it was like 10 of 11. And where we're working has this place legitimate. It has the best grilled chicken sandwich I've ever eaten in my life. All right. Like, okay. Like hands down the best grilled chicken sandwich. Like when I eat this, I don't talk to nobody. I eat my sandwich. Like it's on a freshly made pita grilled chicken. Like, I feel like I could count on my hand. Well, that's not true. I've made grilled chicken sandwiches whilst uh, inebriated. Many a time. I was going to say, I don't go out of my way to get grilled chicken sandwiches very often. So it's like, so it's not like a, a good it's, it's, So it's in the sandwich. same location. Like yeah. you walk to the, the the pizza shop that sells this. Okay. Right. You know what I mean? So like we went to lunch today. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Yes. But yes. like it's me and this guy, me. me and this guy that's been there 30 years, love this sandwich. Like legit, dude. It's, it's a pita. With grilled yep. chicken, lettuce, tomato, provolone cheese, and tzatziki sauce. You make it like a gyro. And if you want yeah. onion, you can have it. But it's the best fucking sandwich I've ever eaten for grilled okay. chicken. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and I had to go to a different location. And I said to him, I was like, hey, I'm out. It was after coffee break. He goes, he points to me. He goes, you're not fucking going anywhere. Throw out your lunch. We're getting the chicken sandwich. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, wow. And But like that shit never happened to me before. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, and it's just, I don't know. I guess you have to be there. Working with these fucking clowns is fun. That is fun. That's awesome. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, a tracks. I know it, take, it took us a little while, but what have you been up to? Not a whole lot, actually. I uh, was house sitting for a friend, so I didn't get to do a whole lot of like PC gaming, unfortunately. But I mean, hey, you do a favor for a friend, right? Wait, so he owns a house and you just watched the house while he was gone? Yeah. yeah like do you feel awkward region. jerking Jer- off in somebody else's house? <laughs> 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 well, thankfully, thankfully, it wasn't that far away from my own house, so I could just go uh, home. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, oh, man. That was fantastic. Um, but uh, So, yes, the answer is yes. It's very strange. <laughs> It's like okay, do you ever you ever stay over? Wait, I'll one up that. Uh, do you ever stay at like your buddy's place and with your girlfriend? No, no. Mm-mm. I don't remember what happened, but maybe like okay, so like maybe like once or twice, so like when I was a teenager or something. Yeah, like it was when I was you're a like you're like at a house party, party or something. And you, and stay your buddies, it, you stay over, sure. Yeah, but where are you going with this? I was gonna say it's really weird to bang your girlfriend in your buddy's bed too. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. 
<laughs> that was strange. I did wash and change the sheets and blankets though, because uh, I felt <laughs> really bad after. I feel like if I feel like if I was that friend, I would be so pissed. I, like I'd be so mad. No, because I burn the bed. Just get at it. Get I don't know because I I feel like the type of friendship we had. Like he would do the same thing to me. And it's it's really fucking funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a prank thing almost at Fair that enough. point. But um. But anyways. Meanwhile, back on the ranch. You were saying A-Tracks? You were house settings? So you didn't play a lot of games? Uh, so I didn't play a whole lot of games, but I got to watch the Gamers 8 CSGO tournament. Uh, I hadn't heard of these tournament organizers before. Gamers 8, usually it's like ESL or Blast or something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, this time it was Gamers 8, and it was really fun to watch, actually. The stages were really, really well done. They had some really cool augmented reality things for the broadcast and uh the tournament itself was just i don't know had a lot of great teams vitality won in the end over ents uh in a very Mm -hmm. close best of three and they it went all three maps so just super super close and i mean yeah it was just it was fun to watch pretty awesome and i think that Hopefully, going forward, Gamers 8 will host more tournaments. And if you like uh, CSGO tournaments or just esports tournaments in general, go check it out because, uh, yeah, it was it was kind of like a small, not well-known tournament, but a lot of big teams played there. I don't remember what the prize pool was, but, again, the broadcast quality was really high. It was cool to see some of the augmented reality stuff that they had for like when it would pan out from the players because you have like all the players on the stage you know yeah they had like a floating cube with the timeout thing in it and they had all sorts of stats that would come up but it looked like the stats were floating in the stadium sure just with the lighting and everything how it was done so it just made it feel i don't know Official the production that. quality, yeah, the production quality was really high, and it made it feel like you were part of the event, even though you ac- weren't actually there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, as much as they could, anyway. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, yeah, that was great. I and I, good. I was just gonna say, I I have been actually watching a little bit, so I don't know if they're current. Like I've been watching like some of the matches, trying to understand the game a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah, CSGO. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. I actually have been watching some of the matches on, like, replays on YouTube. Now, I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't remember the dates of them. I just type in CSGO match, you know, professional right. CSGO match or CSGO, CSGO tournament. Yeah. yeah, like, and I'm watching it. And, like, the most shocking thing about watching them is these dudes are shooting through fucking smoke and headshotting guys. Like, they yeah. know that, like, this guy is popping out of this box and they know the exact height he is, so they just keep one te- one shotting in the same spot, thinking somebody's going to come out. And sure, shit, the guy pops through the smoke, round the box, super spot. And I'm like, how many hours a day do these guys play CSGO? They say that on average to get to a high level, like to where you're playing what's called level 10 face it, which is the kind of upper echelon where the pros usually hang out like the elo of the pros if you will okay. division division one semi pro you know yeah. Yeah, yeah um when you get there you've generally played the game for ten thousand hours <laughs> and i mean there are wow. exceptions but like that's the average level like once you have about ten thousand hours in the game then you know Assuming that you've you're not just that's four hundred and sixteen point six six days. Yeah, it's like a year. But anyway, the point is, is I'm actually excited for CS:GO two. Yes, CS two. CS two. Yeah, because like I feel like yes, I'm gonna be terrible at the game, but I feel like it's a fresh start coming out. You know what I mean? I feel like that when that game comes out, I'm gonna play that game. That's gonna be definitely my second game because. Oh, yeah. Because for me, it's going to be one of those games that, like, everybody's going to... I don't want to say everybody's going to suck because they're not going to suck, but everybody's going to be learning. It's like it's like playing Call yeah. of Duty the first week Call of Duty comes out when people are learning all the new maps. Everybody's yeah. on, like, an equal playing field. 
Yeah, right. they might be better gunfighters than me, but for that first week, you're really going to be able to like actually like learn the game and play it. I will yeah, say it's not new it's... maps though. Wait, what? It's like all the same maps; they're just revamped. Oh, for well, that's two. Yeah, yeah. For See, Source that's two. fucking be... stupid. Well, there might be one or two. But that dude, that's how it's been since like the original Counter Strike. Like it's literally been the same maps, but the maps are upgrade. so, dude. The maps are so good that's like when you start playing them, you realize. I thought the same thing too. I was I was like literally, it's like ten maps and they rotate. But when you're a new player, they do rotate one or two maps every once in a while, and yeah. there's so much to learn about the game that it's you really start to appreciate playing the same couple of maps over and over again especially like when you have your favorite map my sure, favorite map, I get my favorite map train got moved out of the rotation and now it's no longer a competitive map and so i'm waiting for it now to come back into the rotation because i want to play it again like i'm sad that they yeah. took it out and i know eventually it will because it's a good map they're just the current state of the game doesn't really favor that map so they'll make adjustments to it maybe in source 2 i'm really hoping in source 2 it comes back yeah and i'm I know sure that it will. they're going to be they're going to be more about it but yeah that's one of the big things about csgo is the development of new content like is really really slow but that game is still super thriving again because what is there like the core gameplay of it is just there's so much to innovate and try out it's it's fun cs goes top tier the toppest of the tier and, I, um, yeah. oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say marcus will like the graphics update because now the graphics are 10 years old with source 2 being able to like run those top tier graphics and see the smoke plumes and shoot through the smokes and the molotov flames and all of that stuff Oh yeah, you'll be all about it. And the skins, dude. Oh man. I could go on for days about skins. Skins yeah. equals wins. Skins do equal wins. You know, I, I used to think it was dumb until I like recently in paintball when I started like really I don't I guess focusing on my style. <laughs> right. I actually just ordered a, a new hopper because I need a new one anyways, but I went out of my way to get one that matches the color of my grips and tank. So it's brown. It's all brown, which is kind of cool. I'll buy your old hopper. No, I mean you can just use it. You don't have to buy it. But yeah, I'll yeah. be at the field. Mm -hmm. Well, step up. Just go to the field, and then I'll I'll give you a whole setup to use. I have a gun. <laughs> well, I know we a need a tank. Whole setup. You know the one thing I've been dying to talk to Atrax about this week is Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, I didn't look at the notes, but. Everybody I know that has played that game has said all they say is, "Wow." Yeah, I I I want to. I would that. agree. I need to play. It that. is Nick. I feel like this is one game. of your games. Yeah, it's. It might be a little. I'm a little. I don't want to say turned off, but like for me, the play style is a little slow. I don't like the whole turn style. Okay. You know, yeah. like, okay, yeah, this person attacks and this person and this person. I'm not a huge fan of it, but this game is insanely detailed. Like, okay. if certain people die, then certain quest lines are locked off, then certain things can happen. You know, like, a party of three will go running in and it's like, oh, the healer needed to stay alive instead of the mage but you didn't know that and you thought that the mage needed to be protected and so you protected the mage and you killed everybody else and the healer ended up dying and then you find out in the city they're like oh man it's a shame that the healer died because he had all the answers to the stuff that you needed and you're like oh come on man yeah I, I, well now i gotta load my old save again and keep the healer alive and <laughs> And then yeah. you find out that the mage had some other important stuff, so you're like trying to keep them. I don't know. That's how I play, where I like reload yeah. and I want to try and get the outcome that I want. But I, I would do that with Pokemon a lot. I would be like constantly yeah. saving because it's like, oh, I found a rare Pokemon in the grass. I was like, fuck, reload, even though it's a random right. chance every time. You know what I mean? 
if you yeah. like, fuck up ca- or like if right before a legendary or something, you, of course you always say it before and if you don't catch it. Yeah. Reboot. Well, R- run it I, back. There's an insane amount of dialogue options and stat options and classes and races and beginnings. I I imagine that someone could play this game for like 300 hours and not go through everything. That's yeah. just my impression of it. Now whether stuff is drastically different from story to story i don't know maybe it's not but to me already i haven't seen anything this like twice from my i don't know five or six hours but then also watching other people play it like other people play pick different races and they have different starting areas it seems like or just they're Oh yeah, I've been playing for two or three hours, but they're in a completely different part of the game, and I have no clue. Like, what's okay? Well, how did you get over here? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's I just haven't seen a whole lot. So then, you know, oh, it's all new, but there isn't very much for me. It's incredibly detailed. There's a bunch of people you can talk to. There's a ton of quests you can accept. There's skill checks. There's this and that. Um. Yeah, you can play it with other people, too. You can do multiplayer. So I'm thinking, Nick, if you get it and you start getting sucked into it as your single-player RPG, we should definitely play. Okay. Because uh, I think it'd be fun to, like, screw each other over or also just... <laughs> <laughs> team up or whatever, yeah. Yeah, or team up. Maybe, like, two thieves who are just constantly, like, yeah, we're friends, but then every once in a while we'll just really screw each other over because it's content. <laughs> like, right. You know? uh, just turn off your mic, like push the talk, like, Ching. yeah. See, after this turn, I'm actually going to attack Atrax and stab him in the back and then I'll yeah. revive him immediately. <laughs> or like, I'm going to throw up a bottle of poison at this enemy that Atrax is standing right next to and eh, it's okay it'll poison both of them both but whatever of them. we'll but figure it out later <laughs> <laughs> screw it right uh. it's just, it, it reminds me of like a D&D campaign almost I'm just yeah, watching the gameplay much. now well it is D&D yeah. it's I didn't basically know that. D&D well that's There's pretty cool skill checks and it seems to me that like the character you create could die but yeah. you could continue your playthrough because you have all these companions that have like their own quests and stuff. I don't actually know, Ooh. maybe not. But yeah. I see the potential for that to happen where you could just like trash your starting character and go with other characters through the game. There's a 0.0 chance that Nick hell? is fucking playing this because it's th- like uh, the a point week, of all- two off. weeks. No, no, no. You're less oh, than no, two know. weeks away from Starfield. Oh, I know. I, yeah. I, I, oh, I, yeah, I would, that's true. I'll play, I'll play Baldur's Gate in like a year. <laughs> but I will so say, I'm watching true. the intro, like, or like gameplay, I'm assuming it's the first, you know, 40 minutes or so. Like, yeah. you just come across like this weird eldritch hellish area. And you just come across a dude without his the top of his skull. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. It's It's wild. There's some wild stuff in there. I, my question to you, Nick, is TK427 going to let you play Starfield? Yes. <laughs> I need new soundboard sounds, but I think you need a new joke theme. I thought it was funny. Permission granted. <laughs> um, so anyways. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> yes, and I'm going to yeah. be playing a lot of Starfield. Um, I also... Yeah. I, I I will... Um, I would like to try Baldur's Gate. I feel like that's a game that I'm, I'm not. I don't naturally gravitate towards a turn-based RPG or that like view style of like yeah. almost top-down. Like a, I don't it's, either. It's not quite um, like Diablo esque, but it's in the same ballpark, kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, where that's not a- something I I gravitate towards. Style. Atrax, are you an Armored Core player? Um, I don't know. I've seen them, but I haven't really like taken the time. But Maybe. No Is that today? the one where you have to uh, run a mech, like pilot a mech? Yeah, Google Armored Core 6. It came out today. Is it on Steam? Yeah. Yeah, Nick. Pre-purchase oh, yeah, look, Starfield now. What do you get if you pre-purchase? Nothing. What's in the collector's edition? I don't know. 
Don't get me started. I just got paid today. Like I could, this I could buy fr- this. Oh, from software makes it. No, I'm not. I'm not pre-ordering Starfield because Bethesda screwed up Fallout 76 so bad. Right. I, don't, I don't trust them. Well, you're not That's buying. You're fair. not buying the um, Starfield collector collector's edition because it's selling on eBay for 450. Oh yeah, I'm on the what? Bethesda website. Let's see. Oh, that means you can't buy it anymore. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it's Armored unavailable. Looks, this looks pretty cool. Notify me when available. Yeah, you can't. But it comes with it comes with a smartwatch. Oh, that's probably why it's four hundred dollars. Yeah, that makes well, sense. Well, no, oh no, it's two ninety nine. But you can buy one on Amazon, on uh, eBay. eBay for four hundred bucks. The Constellation Edition. That's actually pretty cool. I yeah, see you get a smartwatch. Armor and Core looks pretty sick. It's, it's just like t- mech combat. This reminds me of like uh, Gundam almost, Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. See, like, um, I would, I wouldn't mind like paying the money for that potentially if I knew the game was good already. It's Dude, really the game hard. is gonna be. Listen, I'm gonna <sighs> tell you right now. I, hear I'm me sure out. it is too, but like they Microsoft can't afford to have a bad game. Now it could have a bad launch day because when they load it in, there's some bugs and stuff. Sure. Right, there's, but there, like, there's gonna be because it's a Bethesda game. They always have bugs, right? But like, yeah, they cannot fuck this game up because yeah. the big one is still coming, and they can't fuck it up because if they fuck it up, people may not buy Elder Scrolls Six. Well, I, I don't know about that. People are gonna buy that game no matter what. But yeah. yeah, no, but but they also care about this IP a lot. Like I, they've sunk a lot of time into this. Yeah, you know? dude, this is brand new. This is like. I don't know. I can't. I personally can't wait to watch you not stream this. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to stream it. I'm also going to play a lot off stream, though. Well, so that's what I. Yeah. So that's how you know Nick is hooked. When you get the Snapchat from Nick and it's his lunch break and he's playing a game. Yeah. That's how you know I'm into I'm into a game. Right. Super. And then it. he and like and then he goes through this lull of no game and he's like depressed, Nick. Because he feels like a lost puppy. Kind, I mean, kind of. If I don't feel yeah. like... You know what's weird is, like, I, I have God of War sitting there, but it's like, I almost need the lull to, like, go appreciate a new game after. You know what I mean? Well, it's all story games. When I, I beat Mass Effect 2, I could not play... I didn't play any video game for, like, a month because I was heartbroken that that game was over. Yeah. Like, yeah, I after... I, f- I got really tired of uh, Jedi Survivor just trying to hunt, like collect shit. I'm like, I don't know how people do that. Like once I beat the game, I was like, Yeah, right, I'm over it. I'm you the know? same way. I don't like to go back. Like I got, I like to like make a you know pretty decent effort at getting as much stuff as I can along the way. But I don't. And then like yep. once I beat it and go all the way back, I'm like, man, man, I don't really care. You know, there there yeah. is one game that has that exception for me. Okay, and it's actually. World of Warcraft. Well, it's I, interesting. There's a lot of content. It's a lot of content, but for some reason, like going through a zone and completing every quest in a zone and getting the achievement, like dung achievement unlocked. Lore master of insert quest zone here of Candyland. I completed, yeah, of Kalimdor or whatever. Like that. That is awesome. That's a live and, service game, though. Right. I, I was going to say, they still, yeah, they don't. They also no. like design it to be replayed. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's there's an insane, like you said, an insane amount. I think now we're going on twenty years of content. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's wild. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's why I gravitate towards. I think the heartbreak of Mass Effect Two ending created this live service MMO gamer, which is me. Yeah. That's fair, yeah. Because I don't want the games to end. No, I get it. Yeah, like I, I, I experienced that too for sure. I did with like The Witcher Three. I like didn't want to stop playing it. Uh, I, I want... don't know because I haven't gone back and played Blood and Blood and Wine. So, well, it's because the game is so long, and and I feel like I was so pretty many... done with that actually. Now that I think about it, yeah, I felt, and like, like pretty satisfied. Yeah. But the other thing, too, is when you play a single-player RPG that goes on for hundreds of hours, you're ready for the next game. Like, that's why, like, DLC yeah. for me, like, how about this? I've never played the Mass Effect 2 DLC. 
Really? I didn't even know there was DLC, to be honest. It's or is good, it Mass man. Effect 3? I think 3 had DLC with the Prometheans, or not Prometheans. I was going to say, I didn't remember 2 having DLC. 3 no. definitely did. Oh, no, it did. Uh, list of Mass Effect 2 downloadable content. Uh, Normandy okay. Crash, I... Uh, hold on. This is fucking... Fuck Wikipedia. Oh, yeah, so... Mass Effect 2 Arrival, Normandy Crash Site, Arc Projector, Equalizer Pack, Mass Effect 2 Overload, Layer of the Shadow Broker, Mass Effect okay. 2 Kasumi, Firewalker, and Inferno Armor. I don't know. How many DLCs is Mass Effect? It, Mass Effect 2 eventually received 25 DLC packs. Yeah, but it sounds like it's all a little cosmetic stuff. I was going to say. Not all of it. Yeah, is there DLC? Yeah, there's a bunch of it. Maybe I should. Like, play Mass Effect 2 again? Yeah. I fucking love that game. You should. One series, one series I really want to go through again is Bioshock. Bioshock That's is so, so good. good. I did yeah. that recently, like a few years ago. The remastered ones are yeah. top Re tier. Yeah, oh that's what I didn't like did. Infinite as much, but the first two, Bioshock 1 especially. Anyway. I never, the, those I never beat Bioshock Infinite. I got to the final boss fight and I was playing it on hard. I couldn't beat it. And then after like three times trying, like three different nights trying, I just shut it off and I never turned it back on. The boss. That's Who the hell's the boss in Infinite? I remember uh, when you're on me? the uh, when you're on the plane. Oh I mean, on my the god! Floor, the yes, pir the pirate yes, ship. Yes, yes. And you're it's running a, yeah. back and forth. It's an aircraft carrier, and you're fighting the big bird. That was so fucking hard. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. That took yeah. me forever too. That, don't feel bad about that. That was legitimately hard. I, had to, times, I think I, I think I, I think I. Oh yeah, definitely. I. Oh, so I, I have it. I have Bioshock I think, remastered. <laughs> For me, that was a yeah. really great... I really enjoyed Infinite, but the fact that it had the Bioshock name attached to it, my experience with Bioshock was underwater, and I also read the book, Rapture, by John Shirley. Wait, that's uh, okay. Book? Which, was, which explains, like... What the, how it got created? What happens, like, before the game. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, the lead-up right to the game. And it explains all sorts of really cool stuff, like how they... Uh, slowly talked to the elite in the world and Andrew Ryan was like I want to build this city and oh, yeah, here it all is. that stuff how the plasmids came about 12 hours cool stuff doctor what's the doctor's name saying Tenenbaum no that was um New York City 1946 almost a year later Bill McDonough was riding an elevator up to the top of the Andrew Ryan arms is like that uh? That's the yeah. This is the book with yeah. the audio book. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I um. Add it no, to your list, Marcus. It's a good book. Isn't it Su Chong? Oh no, that's uh, he. He was the one in, that originally did the plasmids. What doctor? Oh, well, hold on. Have you played the Burial at Sea DLC for Infinite? Yeah, but it's been so long, dude. I don't. Yeah, I I thought. See, like I didn't mind once you get to the end of the game. It's spoilers for Bioshock Infinite if you haven't played it. But you, what you somehow, should. somehow yeah. I know, um, they well you know they explained it all with like the the time travel port like the portals that Elizabeth ended up accidentally opening up. There's a portal between the two labs in time, so they could. So yeah. Su Chong ended up fine. It's like a, a loop because like Su Chong's plasmids they weren't plasmids the tonics or whatever. I yeah. think it's Su Chong. Maybe I'm saying the name uh, the the wrong the wrong character, but whatever the nineteen the the um Columbia scientist looked mm -hmm. at rapture and made their own plasmids essentially and then rapture kind of did the same thing like and it just made a loop which i thought was interesting yeah or something like that somebody went looked through time by accident or like you know on the sly and was like hey look at this technology yeah so it all connected my, and... for me the uh Ex extending the sidebar a little bit. Yeah. The one thing that I will never forget about Bioshock, to give some backstory, my family, like, we, when I was younger, we lived kind of in the country, but not really. So it was, like, you know, far enough out of town that we didn't get the light pollution and all that. Yeah. And we, I'd take a tent out into the backyard and run a cable and play video games and stuff. 
And so <laughs> at night, sitting out in the backyard and listening to that, like, my name is Andrew Ryan. I'll yeah. never, those were top tier memories. I, I love Bioshock Dude, for that reason. So- you would be in your backyard in a tent playing Bioshock at night as a kid. I would never yeah, fucking do. I wouldn't 100%. do that now. Dude, Bioshock it's left for so dead. So creepy. All those like super creepy. And then we'd like hear something and then quickly like turn off the TV. What was that? What was that? What was that? What's that? Right. Nothing. Okay. All right. All right. We're good. Turn it back on. <laughs> Let's go. No zombies out there. We're fine. Right. No That's plasmids. Or uh, what are they called? Yeah, splicers. Man. Yeah. Bloody splicers. <laughs> Yeah. Would you kindly? Would you? Oh, man. It's I a have great to game. play those games. Those that game both, is yeah. so good, dude. It's They're both so good. good. Like, I don't actually care what we talk about the rest of the night. We, I could talk to a whole episode of just talking about Bioshock. We it's should. It's so good. Okay, dude. so wait, real quick. Wait, we should Which... like, read read the book or listen to the book. Let's do a Bioshock episode. Why not? Hell yeah. Um, I would have real to quick. play it again. From the Marcus interruption counter is up uh, to like thirty-seven. Um, oh, dude! Actually, <laughs> I would have to. I would have to play it again. Blah. What plasmid or or tonic, whatever the hell they're called in in Infinite, would you pick if you could pick one? Mmm, that's a good one. So, like, I can read them to you. There's a lot of them. I, whatever the one where you can throw like the fireballs. Fire the fire tonic. Yeah, the fire tonic. Yeah. Snap or whatever. Yeah. There's lightning, fire, the telekinesis one where you could like grab stuff and throw it. Yeah. There fire. was the one where you could turn enemies against each other. There was, I think there was like a bee. It was Cyclone like bees trap. or wasps or something like Insect that. Insect swarm. Yep. Security bullseye. Yeah. Sonic boom. What was Sonic boom? Uh, it creates a powerful burst of air in front of the user, knocking back any enemy. Target dummy spawns a hologram that distracts an enemy. Telekinesis definitely. Winter Blast is cool too. That's probably the one I would go for is the telekinesis. Right. Tonic. It would Ta- suck having to use plasmids though. Well, you only use it once. And then you just keep I guess you that's need, true. Then you just need to find Eve to uh that's that what liquid. I mean, it's like having to <laughs> inject yourself with you inject into yourself a with the Eve? Yeah, but the splicer gets formed because they use Adam too much. So they try to make too many uh, like changes, too many plasmids. They like inject yeah, I themselves. Guess, with I the... guess just one. Yeah, it's like <laughs> like one. Like if you're doing doing one, you're okay. You like your player character's pretty okay. And he does a bunch, but the splicers are doing like hundreds. You know what I mean? That's yeah, how they get all true. disfigured and stuff. <clears throat> Those poor little sisters. Right. Um. <sighs> Incinerate's pretty cool too. Sets yeah. the target on fire, dealing damage over time. I was going to I mean it's hard to like not choose um telekinesis because of like the real world like practicality like that's the yeah, most like, that be the so most many useful. reasons yeah you can just move shit and not touching it that'd be the best yeah oh man hi right, we just <laughs> I could do that on all my paintballs just have them be like heat seeking <laughs> yeah you could yeah literally just sit there like shooting up just like do 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 yeah and then just pull them all at somebody exactly and they're like yeah what the fuck or you could just stand there and use it to gather all theirs and just like send them back oh that's you very know? true like, you wouldn't could, even need to hide i could just deflect them around me and be like wow nick never yeah. got shot <laughs> you know how like you catch their grenades in bioshock and send yeah. them back like same same difference that'd be cool yeah Marcus, do you know which one you'd pick? Well, fire. The fire. I said fire, yeah. All right. I feel like you're you're being short-sighted there. No way, dude. Like, I love solar. Like, I like that shit. Because he wants to be able to set people on fire, Nick. Yeah, and it damages over time. So, like, when you're going against a tough enemy and you light them on fire, you're doing extra damage to them while you're shooting them because How they're on fire. How many enemies do you encounter in your daily life that you need to We're talking about in real life, not... Time? We're not talking about in the game. We're talking about in real life. In the game, I like a bunch of different ones. Yeah. Marcus is like, man, these these splicers attack in my house every day. <laughs> I need the fire, man. I would still choose fire. All right. I get you. He'd well, do damage over time to his stakes. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what a girl to my right? asshole. That's true. Oh my. With the uh, spicy food. Yeah. There I almost Doordash Chipotle, actually. 
before the show. I was it's like, not nah. spicy enough, Dude, though. You gotta, you gotta go pick up Chipotle though, because the upcharge on DoorDash is insane. It's insane, dude. It's That's like, a, it's, they yeah, it's actually not worth charge it. more for a base burrito, and then they charge a delivery fee. Bro, yeah, and, I ordered and, a burrito, and you a tip large the driver on top of it. Yeah, like yeah. I ordered a burrito, which is eleven dollars, and yeah. then a b- large bag of tortilla chips and a large queso. And like, if I picked it up, it was like sixteen dollars. DoorDash yep. thirty one. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what I was it's, gonna say. It's yeah. like literally double with all the shit. Yeah. And it's so dumb. Yeah. And if you don't tip your driver, they're straight up opening the bag, taking a leak on it, and then leaving it on your door. Pretty yeah, you much. have to tip. You have to tip your driver because, like, that's part of their pay structure. You know. Right. You don't have to. Well. Yeah, but it's a, it's a dick move to. If you can't afford the tip, then don't don't use DoorDash. You know what I mean? Yeah, just go pick it up yourself, you lazy bum. Right. Just go do it. Yeah, you can be cheap or lazy. You can't be both. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, lazy and expensive, or cheap and active. There you go. Right. <laughs> well, anyways. Oh hey, man. Miles, back on the ranch. Uh, for those who are interested, I'm halfway through the Well of Eternity. In my uh, WoW classic books, I like this audiobook better than the first one, honestly, that I listened to. Um, maybe I'm just used to listening to audiobooks because I haven't really ventured into them a whole lot, but now I've, I'm, I don't know, a book and a half into it. I actually have a better sense of what's going on in this one. Uh, I'm excited to finish it, move on to the next one, which will probably be, I don't know, Wargus mentioned the War Crimes book, which has a lot of my favorite character in it. So we'll see. Uh, But yeah, Well of Eternity, it's going well. (laughs) 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 Wait, I have a quick question. Yes. You mentioned you're you're hoping to like this one more as you go along or something. Have you read other um, World of Warcraft books? Or listen yeah, to so I listened to the, like, people say it's the first one. I believe it's technically the fourth book written, but everybody kind of agrees that it's the first book to start with because it kind of explains how the Horde was originated and where they came from and all sorts of events that kind of set up other books and are explained or talked about in other books. Right. So, like, already there's some characters in this book in Well of Eternity that are in the previous book. So I can see already how it would be difficult to... I mean, you could read or listen to Well of Eternity without having uh, gone through Rise of the Horde. But I don't know. I, I can see how the the events correlate and some things are better explained, like... I don't know. I, I don't have to make yeah. any mental connection, or I don't have to think, oh, well, who's this character? Who's this person? That mental connection's already there of like, oh, this person came from over here, and yeah, they're, this is why they're acting this way. Yeah, like, I, I think of the same... I know what you mean, because I think of the Star Wars movies the same way. Like, if you're introducing it to a brand new person, I've, yeah. I, I, I say it's way better to go in chronological order, and you start with uh, Phantom Menace. Yeah, I would agree. You know, because like it's all, it's also like for example, TK four two seven's not seen any Star Wars stuff. Like seen clips, but never sat down and watched it. Like right. she doesn't she doesn't know, and hopefully she doesn't listen to this part. She doesn't <laughs> she doesn't know that at all. Like I I keep asking like quizzing her on who characters are, and she I know she does not know that Palpatine is Emperor or like is Darth Sidious. Is Sidious? Gotcha. Yeah. Like and we're in the middle of Attack of the Clones. Like, I feel like by Attack of the Clones, she'll get it, clue into it. But, like, it is kind of subtle in Phantom Menace. It's really hard to really understand a movie when you guys only make it through the first 45 minutes before. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I was sitting here, you're like, oh, we're, like, halfway through Attack of the Clones. I was like, like, you didn't finish the whole movie in one go? No. Who, how do you make it halfway through? Well, it kept playing, but we didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> So, uh, which means I have to, you know, now go back and rewatch you it. Brought out the lightsabers. I see how it is. Yes. Yeah. We got inspired. Um, 
<laughs> no, actually, the di- the rom- I've said this before, but the romantic dialogue in Attack of the Clones between Anakin and it's Padme so is funny. so fucking cringy <laughs> and creepy. Like he's it's a legit stalker, dude. It's hilarious. I find yeah. it so funny every time. Yeah. Dude, George Lucas is uh, the biggest nerd on the planet, and he wrote it. Of course, it's weird and creepy. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. it's like what? I the don't fuck? like sand. Oh, no, not that far. It's just like, like in the beginning, he just like stares at her through his eyebrows, like drooling. <laughs> and she's like, "I saw you last time. I saw you. I was fourteen, and you were nine. Like, and now you're nineteen. That's the age gap. You know, and she's twenty four. It's ten year jump. Yeah, but it's like you were a little boy, and he's like." I know, and now I'm a man. I've changed a lot, and you haven't. And he's, like, just ruling. It's weird. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, um, What were we talking about? Uh, oh. Wow books. I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to the next one. In Game of the Month news! The <laughs> secrets... Let's go... The secrets are less, less obscure every day with the game of the month. Guild Wars 2's Guild Wars 2 fourth expansion. That's really weird. Guild Wars 2's, yeah. Fourth expansion came out on Tuesday. I've watched more than I've played because, uh, like I said, I haven't been home the last few days. But I'm excited to delve into it more this weekend. There's a... Uh, so there aren't any server queues, but there was a certain uh, NPC that bugged out and wouldn't allow more than one person to talk to them at once. Oh. And there was a one-minute cooldown between conversations. Uh, thank you to... Hold on. Who was it that posted it? Someone posted it in the Discord. Rothen. Shout out to Rothen for posting it in the Discord. So... People formed a line, like literally there was just a line of people to go up to this person and talk to them. Like everybody just stood in line. They didn't just rush the NPC. Uh, The community is that awesome. Yeah. And so people were just all sorts of people were commenting like, yeah, this was the most fun line I've ever stood in. I didn't know that it was (laughs) bugged. I was just playing along. Uh, Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Proves some people can actually be more civilized online than IRL. <laughs> yeah. So it just people took it in stride and just kind of waited in line and talked about all sorts of random stuff. And, oh, yeah, it's bugged. And Wait, is I'm there, missing... pro- like, proximity voice chat? No, it's just, like, like type area a. chat. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, I gotcha. think, like, WoW style. Yeah, it's yeah. an MMO. Um, but, yeah, so that's it's pretty cool to see. People just, I believe it's fixed now. This was two days ago, so I'm sure that it's fixed by now, hopefully. But there's all sorts of really cool stuff. They released a roadmap on Tuesday with all of the, you know, like what's coming in the live expansion that released on Tuesday, and then the three updates that are to follow. They're continuing the story through the three updates, so... You know, that kind of keeps players engaged. They do this with RPGs, like always. Yeah. Uh, They've introduced a bunch of new maps. In the first update, they're going to introduce the final map and then expand it through the last two updates. So by the end of the third update, you'll have, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four new map areas. And then, the you know, the final map will expand out through the last two updates uh and they've got new weapon stuff they've got new masteries for people to get they introduced the wizard's vault which i talked about on the last episode i believe is that a little different than a wizard's sleeve (laughs) i thought you were gonna play the didn't i was waiting for it i could have i should have wow that's on me way to fumble it on the soundboard nick uh but no it's not it's the uh, seasonal battle pass style that they're going for, but it's completely free. And all of the rewards that are currently active for this season will just go into a vault that you can purchase later seasons, but it will cost more. So 
you can still get it with your free battle pass currency if you kind of miss stuff that you wanted to get or you don't have the time to play now. You mm-hmm. can play it later and get the battle. And again, like it's just free. Everybody can play. Even if you have a free-to-play account, it's just included. They're just trying to get people... Trying to give people more reasons to play Guild Wars 2, and I think that's great because it's like integrated into the game, basically. Sweet. Uh, as a new system, yeah. So shout out to uh, ArenaNet for including something like that. It's the best Battle Pass system I've seen because you don't have to pay anything. It's just included in the game. And yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it again more this weekend. Again, go download Guild Wars 2, guildwars2.com. It's the game of the month. It's free to play. You can play up to level 80. And uh, I believe some other stuff. But the new expansion is out, so go buy it. Because the game is awesome. Yes, indeed. Marcus, what have you been up to, man? Working. Working. I took, like I said, I took a couple weeks off from streaming due to vacation and then just work being out of control. It was, it was a nice break. Like it was nice to not have to stream during all of my craziness, but I came back on Tuesday and it was great. Um, it felt good to be live. It felt good to be playing, uh, destiny it felt good to be playing in the new season season of the witch um, one gripe I have about the new season is that there's no new six player activity. And because I do, we host clan night every week. Like the six man activity really helps when we get six people, which yeah. we most of the time have. So for that, I'm a little disappointed, but the story is really ramping up because the final shape is coming next, uh, essentially in February when this season ends. The next, uh, the, when the ne- this season ends, it'll be the final shape, which is the final expansion for the Light and Darkness saga. Um, we'll talk about the final shape showcase towards the end of the show. I'll just run through it a little bit. Then um, Sunday, we did our raid night, and because there's a new raid coming, uh, which is a reprised raid, is coming September 9th. Uh, We've decided that what we're going to do is just go for some exotics. So basically, uh, Goldie got three lockouts or checkpoints to the final bosses. And that's how we spent our raid night, just clearing the final bosses to try to get everybody the exotics. Which, believe it or not, was a lot of fun. We all know how to beat all of the bosses. So it was actually kind of fun to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like... yeah have to like learn you know just test our skills on how do we do it um so there's that um i was told about this game called wayfinder a couple weeks ago it was at pax and we could have we could have gone to see it but our schedule didn't uh allude to it yeah it didn't yeah yeah, Rayu had suggested it at the time, but we couldn't make it. Right. So it's uh it basically says it's an action MM- <gasps> MMO RPG. So there's it's a three man fire team. Basically you can be a ranged class, a melee class, or like a mid like melee slash range class, kinda in yep. the middle. Yeah. It's it's like a cross of like Warframe meets Destiny kind of you know the art style looks a lot like World of Warcraft but their whole model of game is a lot like those two things um yeah. something cool about the game is when you pick your character that's the only character that you can unlock to start oh you just have one character one character and then as time goes on you unlock more characters and it's going to be like Warframe where like each character is going to do something different Gotcha. Um, I was so uh, I was super excited to get this. It's in early, early, early access, so you pay twenty bucks. But when it's fully released, it's going to be a free to play game. So basically, the monetization is going to monetization is going to be through the roof. But it's a free to play game. 
Right. Um, I will be playing. Uh, I will be playing uh, this tomorrow night to for as my first time to get in. I loaded it up for the first time tonight as we were kind of starting the podcast, and it, I was like twelve hundredth in queue. But for me, I'm excited to play this game, try something new. As the guys were alluding to earlier, maybe that was pre-show. I play, you know, my side games for two weeks, three weeks, and then I quit them because I'm a Destiny main or whatever main main game is. Um, but I would like to try this, and it's something different, but it's also a live service game, and I love an MMO. And I've been really trying to find that MMO that I love, but also have a little bit of shooting. So this might be it. I'm excited to try it. Why not? It was 20 bucks. Yeah. I bought it. I mean, they have some crazy bundles where like one of the bundles is like $150. Yeah. Well, of course. Right. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm eager to try it. I'm eager to play it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. That's uh Google wayfinder. I have reached out to the developers, but they're going through early access woos and woes with servers. So it's popular. So yeah. Yeah, so they have not gotten back to me yet, but either way, we're gonna we're gonna work on that. Anyways, right. Nick, you Nick, you have not been here in four years, so what have you been up to these last four years? Uh let's see. Well, last uh two two episodes ago that I missed, it's because we went to a preseason football game with Marcus and his son Ryan, and that was fucking fantastic. Yes, it was. That was really cool. It was cool to be like switch roles and be like the kid, you know, and not be the little the kid going to the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, be like one of the adults facilitating the fun. Um, played some paintball. Excuse me, did some paintball drills. Uh, in my parents' backyard one day. That was cool. But um, no. So fast forward to last week. Yeah, my vertigo w- symptoms were bad, really bad last week. Like pretty much all week, it was bad Monday, and then like I was, I felt really crappy Wednesday. Like I worked from uh, remotely from TK four two seven's house. I stayed over Tuesday night, and then worked um, remotely from there Wednesday because she worked remotely also. So that worked out nice. But like by the end, like in the at two three o'clock, I felt all fucked up again too. So mm. also, I don't know how long ago I've explained. Um. What I'm talking about when I say like vertigo stuff. So I back in 2020, I got in March, late March 2020, I got the original flavor straight out of the straight out of the oven of COVID. Um, and then afterwards, I after I got better, I noticed I had this like weird car sickness feeling like pretty often, like just, yeah. just walking walking around normal life. And uh, I ended up getting really bad to where I had to I couldn't work one up like I was just like stumbling. Um, Ooh. one shift and like, I felt all fucked up and I know what the hell was wrong with me. And then I ended up getting seen by the doctors in the ER because I worked in the ER at the time. So where I got COVID from originally from a patient, but, um, and turns out I have what, uh, I was diagnosed eventually, not at that hospital visit, but after physical therapy and stuff, I have vestibular neuritis, which is a fancy Ooh. way to say chronic inflammation or like irritation, if you will. Of the nerves in your uh, like balance system in my left ear, so your mm. vestibular system. So yeah. like that that flares up on occasion, like usually due to inflammationy type things. Like if I have like a hangover or like I'm allergic to something, um, it'll like prop up more, pop up more. Right. So, and it's also very visually triggered. So like visually busy areas like a Walmart are terrible for that. Like. Or like a shopping mall where you have like lots of different options, like objects of different colors at different dist- focal ranges. Moving, yeah. Moving, yeah. Surprisingly, paintball doesn't mess me up, but um, but like a Walmart or like like any store where you can like see all the way to the back, like a um, like a TJ Maxx or something, or it's yeah. just like that. Yeah, that messes with me too. But um, so that's what I was talking about flaring up with the vertigo. So like, really, vertigo is usually like an acute attack where like somebody's fine, all of a sudden they like fall on the floor because they get screwed up so that's not that's not really what i have going on it's more of a chronic thing so it feels like a if you've ever been car sick it's pretty much like that but you're not in a car uh this week i'm way better um i did a lot of resting and i did play paintball sunday but um because i do pretty much every sunday because 
just trying to try to keep up to those Division Two, uh, you know, quality standards. Especially if next year I'm going to be going to semi pro. Um, Division Two paintball. Right. So I'm just you know trying to keep the sword sharp, so to speak. Um, and honestly, I was going to play Blood and Wine on Monday, but uh, yeah, that was yeah this week. Holy crap, this week's going by fast. Yeah, I was going to play Blood and Blood and Wine. I was like, okay, like I don't feel like playing Call of Duty, and I'm not ready. For, like Starfield's not out yet. I'm not really. Like, when Starfield comes out, feels like it'll be a good time. Like, I'm ready to, like, get into an RPG. But, sure. Um, but I was going to play Blood and Wine, and then I realized that, like, in my haste to download Jedi Survivor, I uninstalled The Witcher 3. Oh. Re- so, like, it would it took forever. Like, I have pretty fast internet, but not that fast. It, you know yeah, what I mean? It's like 90 gigs or something, right? Yeah, it's a, it's just a giant game, which makes sense. Yeah, so it it's just a great took forever. Game. And then yeah. by the time it was done, it was like after 10 already. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to stream for a half hour. And I was also like feeling defeated at that point, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like I was literally just like sitting in my computer chair with the with the lights all queued up, you know, Hawaiian shirt half on, just the scrolling through like just TikTok, berating me on Discord. Laughing at you, yeah. Yeah. I was in a grumpy mood, I think, too. So I was like... It's like ten oh seven. It's like, oh, it's finally done. Did you want to play? I'm like, fucking no, not at this <laughs> point. Um, after I'm getting heckled the whole time. Yeah, but anyways, uh, no, that was very funny. For the record, I was just yeah. Shout yeah. out to the community. Shout out to the community as always. But um, yeah, not a lot of gaming in general. Um, I've been a little. I don't know. I've just been felt like busy, like on the weekends and even out, Marcus. Yeah, even outside of. TK four two seven time. It's not. I just feel like I haven't had a lot of time to uh, to do that. But speaking of which, it's because there hasn't been any other time. It's either you're with TK four two seven or you're sleeping because you have a vertigina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's funny. Speaking of vertigina, um, last night Marcus and I watched uh, Ahsoka. So we had guys' night at my. We still went to my parents' house for the sweet. Theater set up, um, and I theater. Um, I will. Atrex has not seen Ahsoka, uh, and I feel like a lot of the community members probably maybe have not either. I don't want to spoil it. We're not so spoiling just, it. Yeah, I'll just say like I really liked it. I think um, at points out of ten, I think you would probably gain two points or lose two points depending on how you look at it, as to whether or not you've actually watched all of Rebels. So, like I feel if you're a rebel, if you've seen Rebels. It's. I think it's the first episode anyway. It's like a 9 out of 10. Second one, maybe like an 8. And then I think it, if you lose two points each, if you haven't seen Rebels. Because, like, they do some backstory, but, like, largely they're just throwing the characters right into the story, you know? I was going to say I've heard people call it Rebels Season 3. Season 5. But, yeah. Season 5. Yeah, Doritos season called it season, season 3, but there's already four seasons of Rebels, so this would be Season 5. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But, yes, exactly. That's how it... That's how it it feels, but it's very good. Like first episode, especially I thought was like really well done. Um, I like the style. Um, I like live action. I like the live action representations of the all, all the folks. Um, it is a little weird to hear um, some of the actors like not sound like the actors of the show. You know what I mean? Mm, that's that's, yeah. that's a little jarring. But there was a cool cameo. There was I forgot the actor's name, but he plays uh, Mr. Krabs. He's the voice actor for that, and he okay. played and he was the voice actor of the governor of Lothal in the show, and then he played the governor of Lothal in the show in oh, live okay, action. Nice, yeah. that was cool. Um, he was also the guy that played like the devilly looking dude in the Mandalorian when uh, he goes to like the prison break episode. With Bill Burr, that same episode, he's like the big muscle guy, and he's like blah, 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 angry about everything. Okay, yeah, same same actor. But anyways, so we invaded the uh, Storm and Norman's man cave to watch to watch Ahsoka, and I was coming back from TK four two seven's house, and there happens to be the best wing place <laughs> I've ever been to in my whole life, and I'm not usually a wing guy. Like Marcus is a wing guy. He's like big, yeah, like wings are wing his guy. his jam, like pineapple pizza and wings are his jam. But like I'm like jam, wings are good, but it's not like like I'm more of a burger guy. Like I, that's what I would crave more. But um, I'm a nacho guy. The place is that makes sense. The place is called J. Timothy's Tavern, 
And they make wings where they fry them, then they sauce them, then they fry them again with the sauce on oh, it. Oh, dirt style. Yeah. Exactly. Dirt style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That came from Jay Timothy's, the dirt yeah. style phrase. I forget what I forget what episode you talked about that. I remember that. Oh, well, then it was probably two episodes ago. It was dirt style. But anyways, Mark, yes, I did talk about that. That was fantastic. Mark has tried it, and he loved it. And which is not surprising because they're great wings, but I just wanted yeah. to take take the time to point it out because that is proof that Marcus does like chicken. I like chicken wings. I hate chickens as the animal. I like the food that they produce, but I have no use for a chicken. And the community uh, thinks I love fucking chickens, and then every time they have well, a chance. You, you d- See, you do love chickens. You do, you though. You love wings. If you hate chickens, like, yeah. you, wouldn't eat, you wouldn't love wings. So, yeah, so, you wouldn't love wings. So the wings that Nick got <laughs> tasted delicious. They had a yeah, little right. different flavor. They were good. I would like to have them like when they're fresh. The yeah, because yeah. like their buffalo was like weak sauce. and like It's better. It's a lot better there. Yeah. I'm sure. Like a wing, once it's cooled off and then you like warm it up, it's never as good. Yeah, like a yeah. freshy fresh wing is just oh my god, yeah. like it's the best. Like, yeah, it's just yeah. You love chickens. That's yeah. That's I love the wings. bottom line. Yeah. You know Chicken what else wings. I love? What? What else do you food? Love? Well, yes, food. Okay. You know what I'm not eating a lot of? Food. 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 Yeah, you yeah. you uh, looked smaller when I saw you yesterday. You were less protuberant. Um, got goals, bro. Hell yeah! Keep on, keep it on. Um, do we have any AIE news? Well, AIE news. I'm just going to do a quick clan night Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern. This past week was amazing. First week of the season. Uh, come whether you're a new light, brand new to the game. It's free to try. Or you are um, an experienced player, come play with us. You don't have to be in the clan. Uh, if we have clan mates, they obviously will get first priority to jam with us. But yep. you're more than welcome to come. A lot of times, Rayu comes and hangs out in the voice channel. And he ain't playing Destiny. Um, so Death Tuesday night's clan night is a lot of fun. The other thing is... We had the final shape showcase that happened Tuesday this week. Um, the final shape is coming February 27th, 2024. And uh, they... What is that? The final shape? It's the final expansion for the Light and Darkness saga. So basically, they're at the end of their storytelling. And now okay. they're going to start an all new story, which to me means... Here comes Bioware. You know what I mean? Like, they're through their main game, and now they've... What do you mean, Bioware? Like, the content's going to slow down. They say it's not going to, but I don't... You know, I don't foresee them coming out with these giant story packs moving forward. They have visions of grandeur, but they're about to release two more games. There's going to be a marathon game. What's the other one? Matter. You know what I mean? There's there's two more games that Bungie's producing. So as soon as this is over, I think Destiny starts to slow down unofficially. Yeah, that makes you sense. You know what I mean? But maybe not because Sony bought it for $3.6 billion. So anyway, um, in our new season, Season of the Witch, sees players attempt to resurrect Savathun, the Witch Queen. But before they can do that, they need to deal with Why? her sister's... Z- well, because she has the codes to go through the traveler to chase oh. after the witness. Okay. And and before they do that, they got to deal with uh, Savathun's sister, Zivu Arath. In order to handle that problem, Eris has turned into a full hive queen and some witchcraft has happened. Uh, this season is taking like a new model. They're basically injecting a deck of card game into this, into this season to like Destiny Two Hearthstone. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, whatever. Um, 
They announced the next raid, which is a reprise raid, which is Crota's End, which was the first raid ever in Destiny 1. People say it's amazing, it's short, but they said they're making it really hard. Um, that's coming September 1st, which I actually think that's a terrible launch day because a launch weekend because that's Labor Day weekend. And a lot of people go away on Labor Day weekend. You know what I mean? That's like a big travel day. I guess. Yeah. But like, I feel like a lot of gamers stay home and play games. Well, like maybe. Today. Hey, listen, maybe. And maybe it'll be the busiest ever. But for me, I might be away. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like holiday weekend for me is like time with the fam. So yeah. yeah. anyway, uh, they announced new supers for Void, Solar, and Arc that are coming. They're doing weapon subfamilies. Think of a rocket launcher sidearm. So they're going to be releasing a sidearm that's like a pistol with mini rockets that shoot out. So they're How much introdu- does it cost? <laughs> How much does what cost? How much does it cost? So the yeah. expansion is $50. And okay. if you buy the digital deluxe edition, which gives you all of the season pass for the year, it's a hundred bucks. Oh, all right. Why? Wow, what's your smart ass comment? <laughs> I know. I, I was. I was asking how much the exotic cost. Oh, so did when did we did we talk about pay to win? Was that with Feta? I think that was last week. Yeah. That yeah. So I. Nick, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Do you think it's pay to win if we announce an expansion and you have to pre-order it? There's a there's an exotic gun that comes with the expansion, okay. but if you pre-order it, you get that gun right away. Yeah. That's pay to win. But nobody else in the game has it unless you yeah. pre-order the game. Is that pay yeah. to win? Yes. Whether it's good or not. Yeah. All right, so well, there it is. Well, I mean, if it's if it's not a good gun, then maybe it's not. It doesn't to win. matter. Yeah, but if no, you that, got, no, if that, it, that it, no, that it, that definitely matters because, like, if that's the best gun for that meta, then that's pay to win. If it's not, if it's just middle of the pack, then no, then no, that's normal stuff. But hear you know me out. I mean? That's if the whole scheme and, of if, it being if, pay to win. If a tra- if it's a two versus one, right? You didn't pre-order the game, and Atrax and I are both using the new gun, and it's win. It's either win or lose this last match, and we both kill you with this new gun, whether it's meta or mid. You're going to be pissed off because you don't have that gun, and you're going to feel know if you cheated. Want to use two v one as an example. All right, a one v one. One v one. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So like, if what? if it's me versus you, and I yeah. have the gun and you don't, whether or not I had a better shot at you, and I would have killed you with any other gun. Your mind is going to say this sucks because I can't pre-order the game right now. Yeah, I guess. But like, yeah, I think that's a big, that's a lot different than it being actually better. You know what I mean? Yeah, but if you don't have it because you can't afford to or whatever your reason is, are you going to be pissed off and say this sucks because it's pay to win? He had the money to buy the game now, so he gets the gun now and I got to wait until expansion day. Yeah, but like I, that's not the game's fault at that point. Like that feeling of like the FOMO feeling you're describing, yeah, is more. It's just like that's just a general thing that happens. Like I want the new thing. I want the new shiny toy. But like if the new shiny toy is not actually statistically better than the rest of the toys that you didn't pay for yet, then that's not pay to win. And I don't think that's unfair. That's just a new shiny thing to pay for. It's sure. like covening. It's like somebody like having a dope like like a crazy knife skin in CS:GO. Like just because you didn't get the knife skin, of course that makes you like wish. But you the, could get knife the knife isn't skin. more powerful at all, right? Every but knife right. uses it. But it, but it, it the idea in, is in, like in your in your example though, you're saying okay, the gun is not the best; it's just middle of the pack. Then it'd be the same thing as a knife skin that's not any better or worse. Just like it, like it doesn't impact the meta of the game. I think then it's not gun, a big deal. I think this gun is better than if it is a better than though. Then then all those feelings that you're talking about are definitely like that's not. Cool, because the game's manufacturing the those negative feelings of like missing out and like that's pressuring people to go spend extra money. You yes. know what I mean? Because they're like legitimately at a competitive disadvantage. Yeah, you see, does that make sense? It does. Yep. I just wanted to ask you and get totally your input. on board. Um, they're going to do yeah. a power rework, which I actually like this a lot. So basically, let's say Nick and 
uh, Atrax wanted to do the new strike with me. Okay. Let's say I'm max level. Nick and Atrax is level. We they will be level bolstered to my level, so we can do content, and you guys won't be paper like paperweights. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah. die all the time. So I really like that idea that everybody's power level is going to go to whoever's the highest is in the fire team for that activity because it makes it more accessible for people. This is yeah. where I'm going to get a little spicy. So. Okay. After the final shape, seasons are being replaced by episodes. These work similar to se- similarly to seasons, but should pump a bit more juice in into the game on a regular basis. This is where I get spicy. So okay. from March to June this year, or next year, you're going to get our first episodic uh, season. It's called Echoes. So basically, there's three acts. Each act is six weeks long. Okay? Okay. The season pass for this, so 6, 12, it is 18 weeks. So there's three a year. Okay? Okay. Yep. The each act, which is six weeks, is going to have the first act is going to have 100 levels. For your season pass. Okay. The second act is going to have 50. The third act is going to have 50. So there's going to be 200 levels that you have to grind through in order to get all of the rewards given. Okay. Right. Okay. It's usually 100 rate in 16, no, 18 weeks. 18. 18. Yeah. Where right right now it's 12 weeks for 100 ranks. Now, a lot of people finish their ranks soon. I just squeaked by. But that's because I don't do all the things to gain levels quick. Yeah. Right. But between me and you, I feel like this is a artificial grind to try to get people that can't play the game who want the rewards to spend more money on silver to buy their ranks. So they can get all the rewards. Could so be, you either yeah. have to grind twice as hard over 18 weeks or pay the money. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely what's happening. Yeah. Yep. So in, 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 I'll give you an example. This is all happening in each act. So in each act, you're going to get a new quest, a new story, a new activity, new weapons, a new artifact mods, a season pass ranking, season pass rewards and new armor every act. So every six weeks, there's going to be a whole new track of stuff to earn, which equals more grinding. Right. Yeah. So so for me, I'm a little turned off by this because I don't, and this is my own personal feelings. I don't have the time to grind like that. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to definitely get that FOMO feeling because I know friends who play this from the second they get home from work until, you know, one in the morning every day. They'll mm-hmm. be able to finish this track right away where me, I'm going to be way behind yeah. because I can't play this game as much. Right. Right. And I, I'm i not sure. Like, I like the fact that they're going to be giving us new story every six weeks. But I also feel like they're asking people to grind even harder Every six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, but don't forget, they're taking them. It looks like they're taking a month off in between each one, too. Like the first one, Echoes, Act One, whatever. Well, it'll go so, May. It'll go to June 30th, and then July 1st, it'll start. Oh, okay. I thought it would be like it stops at the beginning of June and then starts at the beginning of July. No, know, they can't like do that. that because they're going to want you to grind out those levels. Oh, I see. Okay. So basically, it's a never ending grind. Yeah, but that's an MMO, isn't it? Classic Destiny. Like yeah, I, no, 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 no. Like an MMO, there's like you're grinding for gear, sure. But like, okay. do you not get gear with your levels? Is is not what you're looking once for? You, so the, is the, to get the, your the, the rewards. It's it, well, you need to get levels in your season pass in order to unlock the rewards. Right. Once you're max level, you're max level. They've changed the way that every season. Yeah, it, it, I you meant, have to like, grind. 
I meant, you know, you're getting the levels in the season, which is just essentially like a battle pass for wars, right? Yeah. But also, too, they said that this moving forward after the final shape, this would be the type, the way they drop content from for Destiny 2. So basically they're saying no more expansions. It's just going to become purely season pass based. Yeah. Yeah. Which is code for me that it's the it. That's it. Yeah, they're not they're not making more big content. Big content. Yeah, I I get I get that. I get that that sounds like that to, that sounds like that to me also. It's like a veiled yeah. way to to keep making money and producing stuff but not You know, I, yeah, I I've got the tinfoil hat on with you. It sounds like they're they they're making it so that they have let they are like committed to making less content so like they can scale back their dev team and work on other stuff or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and they, I mean, the Destiny players are incredibly devoted and uh, loyal and thoroughly willing to pay insane amounts of money to play Destiny at the top level and get all of the gear and, and guns Atrax and is, stuff. is not so, at all salty about have a, having to spend extra money on Destiny. So, well, I I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't buy the expansion, so... I don't know, like, I I don't, I see what they're, what they're doing. I've often felt that Destiny has too much change too often. Like, it just, this seems even more so now. They're just, like, releasing more often. And they're trying to, like you said, there's more of a grind. Maybe it's maintenance mode. Maybe they're just trying to find a way to better make money and do less work because they know they can get away with it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. Be good. I'm not yeah. behind the doors, you know. Yeah. But they've they've figured it out, and they're doing. I, I don't know what their numbers are, but I'm sure they're doing fine. They're doing fine. If all this it's sounds all- fun to you, go to aie-guild.org. Get our Discord information. Ask for a guild invite. Whether you want to come play. Destiny 2 with me, or Guild Wars 2 with Atrax, or pretend to play games with Nick because TK427 <laughs> didn't allow him to play, we would love to have you. Now, Nick has stood up, and he's been doing the dance for about 10 minutes, so we'll be right back. My God, what is taking him so goddamn long? Nick, hurry up, man. It's all that beer you're drinking. Come on, bro. Rose the four hoes, man. Get off Snapchat. And we're back. So today... We have a whole lot of working class questions that I can't wait to answer. And I got to start things off with one from last week that was directed at me that I did not get to answer because of the vertigina. Uh, it's from Doritos and it says, Nick's, Nick, wait, what is who your... Is it? Who is it from? Oh, great, great question. Uh, oh. It's from Do- Doritos. Doritos asks, uh, Nick, what's, what is your next RPG going to be? And the answer is Starfield. It's going to be Starfield. I think what it comes out September sixth, but I think that's a Wednesday. It is a Wednesday draft, so I'll play it all on stream for the first time September eleventh, Monday, September eleventh. Uh, rip, you know, it's a day to remember. And it's a day to be streaming Starfield. Um, our next question comes from. Mr. Frozen Cheddar, a.k.a. Joey Feta, a.k.a. Cheddar underscore mini underscore painting on Instagram. Uh, piggybacking- a.k.a. Nerds Community Manager. A.k.a. Exactly. Uh, piggybacking off of Dorito's question from last week, what is your favorite recipe that you make for food? Marcus, what's your favorite recipe that you make? All right. Great answer. Atrax, nice. what is... <laughs> Oh, dude, actually, my favorite recipe is, like, anything on my new grill that I got because it's just so amazing. And Dude, the like, Blackstone. Honestly, I can't believe I got it on such a good deal, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. <laughs> oh, man. See, see uh, Marcus fell in love with some I pretzel fuck- chips on break, I fucking so hate just you both. Him off mic. <laughs> um... <laughs> What's my favorite recipe to make? Um, 
Dude, that whole time I wasn't even listening or thinking about the question. It really was because, like, I love making homemade burgers. I love yep. making, um, like, spaghetti and meatballs. Like, there's mm, so many good, good, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need it to be, like, bougie or classy. Like, spaghetti and meatballs still to this day is, like, top five favorite dinners. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I, um, yeah, mine's probably pecan pie that I make. That's what I'm most proud of. Because it's, like, it's really, really good. Um, I like, I, what I like to cook, I like steak a lot. Like I'm really good at cooking steak also, but I feel like that's a lot. That's not really a recipe. It's just like a technique, you know? Yeah. Do you like poon tank pie? Technique. Yes. It's my, that's my favorite actually. Um, hmm. interesting. <laughs> A-trax, what is, what's your favorite recipe to make? Uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of my own recipes cause I'm really lazy. <laughs> I just throw stuff in the air fryer majority of the time. But, yep. uh, I mean, I like I'm making mozzarella sticks. That's pretty. Dude, chicken them. nuggets in the air fryer are legit. Oh, they're especially way, dino nuggies. Mm, yeah, oh, dude. yeah. You got to eat them with ketchup, though, and only dip it in the ketchup after you take a bite. Yeah. Because then you pretend it's dinosaur blood. At least that's what I did when I was a little kid. Yeah. Like, you, like bite the head off the dinosaur and then dip it in ketchup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you guys? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, Mark, I think Marcus is too old to be like eating dino nug- nuggets uh, when he was younger. Point. Yeah, I think it's more our age bracket. At least, yeah, my mine were just down. MSG nuggets. <laughs> right. In, in his day, the dinosaurs were walking around. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> They're still outside. That's why I'm in the museum. <laughs> oh <Yep>. man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, right. air fryer stuff is great. It is very good. Uh, Frozen Cheddar, a.k.a. Joy Feta, also asks, of all the crazy food you see in video games, what would be the one thing you wish was real? Oh, that's real easy for Ooh, me. Crazy food? I say Nuka-Cola from that's Fallout. That's a good one. Yeah. I think they... I just want to see what it tastes like. And, like, people recreated the recipe, but, like, I want to know what it tastes like for real, you know? Yeah. I think they sold Nuka-Cola for a while. Like, you can get they, bottles they... of it. There was a uh, a Target promotion where you could, but it was just Coke, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Oh yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it, I don't think it was actually like the Nuka because like it, uh, let me look it up. Like the flavor profile of Nuka Cola, as described in the game, is like tropical almost. It's like not cola flavored. Yeah, crazy food in video games, man. I I don't know food in video games. That's I haven't I haven't thought about that. Marcus, have you thought, like, do you have anything, man? Um, In SWOTOR's, like, Thanksgiving, it's, like, called the Feast of Prosperity. You run a restaurant, and there's this giant fucking, like, meat plate that yep. you serve to people. And I would have to say that, because I don't really play video games that have food in it. Yeah, I, I never pay attention to the food. Huh. Maybe like a health potion. Does that count as food? Do potion? Well, no, potions Whoa. count as food. You know what? What? The cooked spicy pepper from Breath of the Wild. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> fucking make those. Well, there you go. That's funny. I I would say also. Um, I was gonna say like a sweet roll, but then somebody stole it, so I don't actually know what that tastes like. Hmm. Is that wasn't that a meme? Somebody stole my sweet roll. I don't know. Elder Scrolls. Well, anyways, that's what oh, I was going was for. Oh, was it Elder Scrolls or maybe Fallout? It was Elder Scrolls. Uh, a sweet roll also popped up in Fallout as a Easter egg. But oh, okay. um, this Nuka Cola Classic recipe is like it's kind of weird. Like the, there's a cookbook. It's like coriander seed and orange zest and like cinnamon. It's, this this seems like a folly flavor profile. Yeah. Hmm. Add lemon and lime halves. Vanilla extract. <laughs> Look at them over there eating pretzels. I'm not eating pretzels. No, just Marcus, Marcus is. <laughs> I know. Marcus just, is just off just camera. Like just, just, he just moves. Just, just, I see him just move the microphone away, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I haven't had anything like that shit in weeks, dude. And watching Nick spend the first hour and a half so of our podcast eating pretzel chips, it just fucking made me want a pretzel <laughs> chip. And I feel bad if I'm chewing them in my ear, but I don't really care because I'm, I'm really a fat guy at heart and I'm actually trying to change that. But these things are delicious. Dude, it was this just the way funny. you did. Because like, for those that don't know, during the break, Marcus was eating his chips like right into the microphone. And it was just, yeah. it was funny, which is fine during the break. But then, then to see you just like slowly push your microphone away and dip your head <laughs> off camera. Like, <laughs> way we can't see you, but you're, you can like kind of see your mouth moving. Like, right. <laughs> we see you eating over there, Marcus. Oh, dude. That's fucking funny. <laughs> uh, Marcus, what's our next question say? Thanks, Nick. A tracks. Now that you're back streaming, what did you find out you missed the most? Ooh. Uh. Hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. What did I miss the most? You guys, the nerds community. I guess. Aww. <laughs> No, that's, 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 I get it though. That's, I, I mean, I guess that's like the only reason to stream really is for the community, right? Um, but it's been nice to just focus on a game or two, like have a set time. All right, Friday night, I'm going to for sure play this game. Something to think about. Okay, well, people in past streams might have seen this, so maybe we should play this, or instead yeah. we should play game of the month or something like that. Or, um, I was in a four stack on Face It. That was really fun one night. So, no, it's just been nice to be back, if you will. Yeah. Because totally. I miss streaming and here I am back again. Hell yeah, brother. I Frozen. think uh, Chetta had a, a series of three questions each that are individual ones. HR, yeah. what's our next one? Yeah. He wants to know, Marcus, what's your favorite beer to drink on the beach? It's a great question. Corona. Modelo. Yeah. Corona or Modelo. I like a Mexican lager, yeah. Corona I'm or Modelo. I'm, that I'm too. a Modelo guy, typically. Or but. Coors Light. Yeah. I honestly shout out to like a shan- like a lemonade shandy is good too. Like the Narragansett yeah, but it's one too is sugary. Or, you can like drink like there, one. There was this or like one a, beer. The, the line and Google lemon shandy is good too. But you're right. I think I tap out at like three of those. And I'm like, all right, this is too much of the sweetness. Honestly, though, like a really ice cold, it sounds stupid, but those like strawberry lemonade natter days from natural ice, those are actually good, too. Get the I know you're shaking your head. Here. They're good. Get the I, fuck out of here. I have crushed several of those after paintball. Like there's 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 something there. Hey, Nick. Uh, yeah. Feta, Feta wants to know, you ever uh, thought about trying contact lenses? So that's an actually a long story. So buckle in and get prepared. It all started. He's going to give us the Mount Rushmore of answers. Back in Back stores, to the pretzel chips. The year was 2014. Uh, and I'm in, I'm in college at UConn. Uh, that's what's in stores, Connecticut. Um, back in class at UConn, I'm, you know, taking classes, doing the college things. And I realized like, my especially later in the day my like distance vision was getting blurry and i could feel like my eyes were tired and so i make a eye doctor appointment and i was like fuck do i need like distance classes and then uh my eye doctor appointment was in the morning that day and they check my eyes out they're great perfectly fine they're actually really i have really good distance vision um and it's like 20 2010 on my left eye and 2015 in my right but um and the doctor's like, well, wait, I don't think you actually have a problem with distance. I think you are just looking up at uh, looking at stuff close to your face so often for, it's for, for so much time, be it like your phone, your laptop, books, like whatever it is, it's close to your face all the time. So like your eyes are used to that focal range. And then when you go to try to flex those muscles the other way to look at stuff far away, they're not like the muscles aren't used to doing that. So you get it's called like eye fatigue or eye strain. So they give me a light reading prescription to say like, okay, like, although you don't need the reading glasses, we're going to give you like reading glasses um, with a really light prescription. Just wear this when you're looking at stuff close to your face all the time. Well, that was 
all fine and dandy until I went to a lecture hall where I am looking at the my laptop in front of me and then looking up at the board, which is far away, and I can't do that with just reading prescription. So I ended up wearing my glasses at the tip of my nose like a librarian and looked like an idiot. <laughs> so then I got I got bifocals, which those look dumb too with the line comparatively, anyways. And then I got uh, progressive or whatever they call. I think it's progressives, where it's like a progressive change from reading to basically nothing on the top. But I also have like over time I've had like a slight astigmatism correction. It's like a point two five or something. So, um, which is barely anything at all on the top. And then I have the reading on the bottom, and then the glare, anti glare stuff for like computers. This is a long story short to say, I don't really need my glasses. They're just for eye fatigue. But uh. I also asked, I just went to the eye doctor recently and asked about contacts because of the top astigmatism correction. And he's like, no, like you can't even, even if you did that, A, it would fuck up your, when you looked at something up close and that would be weird. Oh. But B, your correction is so minor that they literally don't make contacts for that low of a, of a correction for the distance stuff. So like, I think the lowest prescription uh. they make for contact lenses is point seven negative point seven five, and mine's negative point two five. So like, I'm not even, I can't even, you know. Can't get them. Yeah, I'm not even like eligible for it, and they wouldn't really help me anyways because I don't really need the glasses to begin with. It's really just for eye fatigue. So that was my roundabout answer <laughs> to answer that. If you ever thought about contacts, there um, you go. Yeah, and Sophie Sophie asks, asks Atrax, when you're streaming, is there something that happens that annoys you once you've settled in? Yeah, there's a lot of things. How much time do we have on the show? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, there's a few things like disruptions, bots that come in, you know, like people that yeah, Clankers. are annoying. Yeah, or people that don't follow the rules, people that like come in and, oh, hey, you're streaming. That's cool. Do you want to buy some graphic effects? <laughs> I'm a GFX designer. I'm a fellow streamer, too. You want to promote my channel, this and that? Like, I hate that. That's that's always annoying too. People that come to hang out are always welcome, but yeah, yeah, that that kind of bothers me. And then also like when people in uh, voice chat, like we're working as a team, like especially when I'm playing CS:GO, we'll be working as a team, and I I know we kind of like venture out into PG thirteen on the stream, but like I try to keep it relatively tame and then yeah, i'll be playing csgo yeah. and someone says something that's like very clearly terrible yeah it's like all right well we were working together really well do i just mute this person because now like we can't work together which is the point of the game or are they just gonna like keep spewing this terrible stuff that you know like i people can say it i'm not saying that but it's just like i don't want it on my stream yeah, no, it that's makes not the sense. environment that I want, you know. So it's that that really like makes me uncomfortable too. Is people just being stupid and saying like really edgy things just for the sake of being edgy when it's like there's no reason to do it, you know? Right. I don't know. That that bothers me too. Yeah, totally get it. Yeah, Marcus, what's your favorite drink at home? Wait, so wait, wait. To I want to actually answer that streaming question. Yeah. You know what really annoys me is when the chat gets quiet. Because I love to talk to people. Yeah. When the chat goes quiet, it just, it sucks. Yeah, because that's, well, I mean, that is the whole point of streaming is to engage with the chat. But, like, right. is that especially for you, because that's your thing. You, like, thrive yeah. off the social energy. Right. You know? Yep. Yep. Um, can I circle back for one second before we go to the next question? I actually yeah. found a, a, a Nuka Cola recipe I can actually read. Um, so first of all, for stats, it, it's plus one to endurance for thirty minutes. Uh, but but the ingredients are two cups. This is to make the syrup: two cups of water, two cu- three cups of sugar, uh, zest and juice of a half an orange, zest and juice of half a lime, zest and juice of half a lemon, uh, one cinnamon stick, three cardamom pods. A half teaspoon of coriander seed, three two star anise, and a, a quarter cup of browning sauce. I don't know what the hell that is, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So you combine 
the water, sugar, orange zest, lime zest, lemon zest, cinnamon stick, cardamom pods, coriander seeds, and star anise into a large saucepan placed over medium heat. Whisk until the sugar is dissolved to bring the glaze to the oil. Reduce heat to low. Serve for 10 minutes. Uh, store in an airtight container. Add the orange lemon juices. Mix in the browning sauce vanilla extract once cooled. Cover and store in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours and up to two weeks. Then you combine it with a cup of seltzer water, ice, and uh, five to seven tablespoons of that syrup. Stir it together. Gives you one ice cold glass of Nuka Cola. There it is. You forgot the you forgot the last ingredient. Radiation? No, you got to ask TK four two seven if it's okay if you make a Nuka Cola. <laughs> oh my god! Whatever. It's never gonna get old. I know. It never. Is. Because it's, the it's we funny. we Atrex and I during the break we had a little like conversation about Nick's evolution with TK four two seven, and yeah. we'll see if it comes true. Yep. Predictions have been made. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Sovi asks Marcus, "What is your favorite drink at home?" Coffee. Nice, that's a good one. You guys, favorite drink at home? Um, probably coffee. You know what? No, well, yes, I drink the most coffee for sure, but like, I also really like a like a fruit juice sometimes, like pineapple juice or something. Yeah, that's a good one. I like green tea, like a I sweet like, green like a, tea. Just a big jug of like some sweet beverage. It's like lemonade yeah. or something. Uh. Or, or uh, something with rum in it. I like rum too. Yeah, no, I get you. It's um, funny you say Nick, that because Nick, you Atrax, you love stuff with rum in it, and Nick loves stuff with cum in it. Hey-o! <laughs> it was one time, okay? Oh, man. <laughs> This was show has one. gone through hell. Yes. So we also Speaking asked... Speaking of stuff in your eye, Nick, have you ever considered LASIK? <laughs> <laughs> it was not in my eye, okay? Uh, hair, but not my eye. The, <laughs> have you ever considered LASIK? No, because I don't need it. Uh, my eyes are fine. I, I just I, The glasses are just for eye fatigue. But you know who has had LASIK? TK427, which explains uh, why stormtroopers can't hit anything. Um, for all of you, what is your favorite meal to cook at home for yourself, uh, or for others? Mozzarella sticks. To cook to cook for myself. I really need to learn how to make it, but I want to make a good fried rice. I want to learn how to make like top tier fried rice. I think like, I don't know. I make some pretty banging sandwiches and stuff. To cook for myself. Yeah. I don't it would really be cook for myself very often to like really oh, go I make for a something. Lot of ramen too, I guess. Mine would be yeah. like an egg omelet. Oh yeah, oh, I make good. a nice yeah. omelet for myself pretty pretty consistently, like on the weekends when I have like actual free time. Ooh. All right, okay. I just remembered two. One of them basic, one more complicated. One, the double decker peanut butter jelly sandwich. Double so, decker? I've never done that. Yep. All right, so you have your two base pieces your top and your bottom one of them peanut butter one of them jelly then you okay. get a middle one and you put it in the toaster and you toast the middle one you can toast the outside ones too but you want the middle one a little no, bit I'm more toasty yeah then on the middle one you put like peanut butter on one side jelly on the other and then you match them up so you have like two got a little yeah. crunch in the middle there you go double decker peanut butter and jelly sandwich and if you really want to get creative, you can switch up the jellies on either side. So you could have like strawberry on one and blueberry on the other, or like grape Whoa. on one and blue. Like there's See, all sorts of combos you could go with that. You could do Nutella on one side and regular peanut butter uh, on the other. All sorts of combos. That's great. I also, shout out to blueberry jelly. I forgot about right? that stuff. That is fantastic. Oh yeah. Like the I think like the Stonewall Kitchen one is what I usually would get. Yeah. It's like the little glass, like, it's kind of square jars. The um, other one I make is yeah, uh, breakfast sandwich, bacon, eggs, and hash browns, or tater tots if I'm feeling lazy and don't want to make oh, hash yeah. browns. Nice. Um, oh, But what's your favorite food to cook for others? Mine's meatloaf. I, I'd say for the uh, 
I, how I answered the other question, like the pecan pie or steak, because like I'm I'm actually good at it. But for, cook for myself, man. I think I'm gonna go with like a. I end up doing like these bachelor bowls, I call them, which is like protein, so like chicken or hamburger or something, like broccoli and rice, and then like condiments. Like I'll do like sriracha yeah. mayo or something or barbecue sauce. But like favorite meal to cook for yourself, I don't know. Maybe like shout out to uh, English muffin pizza or bagel pizza. Oh you just yeah, just put sauce pizza with American bagels. cheese. Or no, just like you make it yourself. English muffin or bagel pizza, like on a whole bagel. That's yeah. just like a late late night inebriated kind of snack. But mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, anywho, we have another set of questions from Dorito. Uh, what's his first question? What's your favorite kind <laughs> of fire? All right, you want to start this thing? The ones that go boom. I like the ones that go like. Boom, tss- like yeah, the crackly, are... like the, the fizzle kind of ones. Yeah, I mean everybody loves like the big, giant, awesome fireworks. Ooh. I think yeah. what Doritos means is like the ones that you would normally buy and can afford. <laughs> like no, I like, guess no. I, I, yeah. I would go. I like the alien missiles. Like what is it? I was oh, I was gonna say that next. The ones that go like whistle. Yeah, yeah. I you buy, see. Like, I love shooting rack bottle rocket. Them. Yeah, I I've never shoot- bought. I've never bought real fireworks. All right. I don't even think I've ever bought any fireworks. Now Roman about candles it. are fun too. Dude, Roman I love candles. Shoot. I've I fucked around with them and like did like wizard duels and you shoot them at each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, I like shooting Roman candles out of my ass. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's wrap it up. Of course he does. Is uh, it lightning bugs or fireflies or something else? It is yes. fireflies to me. Yeah, I say fireflies uh, as well. I hadn't heard I of say, lightning bugs in I say yes. until I was an adult. Uh, Marcus is uh, abstaining from the vote. And how do you pronounce uh, the word that's spelled C A R A M E L? Atrax. Uh, I well, that I guess would be caramel. Well, you spell caramel but, the same way. Well, I've seen C A R M E L. It's no, that's like not the same. Caramel. That's just that's I, mis- I would just, say that's caramel. Just misspelled. I, I say caramel. caramel. I think it's like question of one syllable or two. Sometimes I say caramel two. just to be like fancy, like oh, I would yes. love some caramel, please. Oh, uh, yes. absolutely. Please pass this, me one of the caramels out of the glass jar dish. This caramel is absolutely delightful. Like yeah, yeah. I yeah, call no. it caramel. Caramel. Yeah, caramel. Two syllables. Uh, why isn't poutine bigger in the U.S. yet? I don't know. It's really it's good. It's a good, it seems like it would be an American thing, right? Like yeah. French fries, cheese, and gravy. That sounds, uh, it's like, it's good. Super unhealthy and American. And I don't know. You know why, you know why it's not big here? Because the Canadians haven't allowed it to cross the border. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, there you go. Speaking of funky foods. Last question from Doritos says. With county fair time fast approaching, what is your favorite ride at the fair? The giant yellow slide. Yes, that's mine too. The yellow Mm. slide. I don't do rides except for that because I don't trust their rickety ass ones. Right. But Nick, this year, you got to come with us and ride that shit with the kids. Oh, and they freak out. (laughs) Freak out. They're like, let's go. Uh, That's awesome. Ryan gets air. Does he really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, because he's so light, he just goes off it. That's really funny. I, Dude, I would fly down that thing. I don't really like the fair rides only because I've been to so many theme parks that fair rides are like kind of ruined. But, yeah, at one of the theme parks, I can't remember if it was Six Flags or Cedar Point, but there is a like adult extreme version of the swings you know the ones where like you lock yeah. yourself into a swing and yeah. it spins you around this is yeah. like you know a hundred feet in in the air and they're just like yeah, spinning around yeah i got and on one like, of those when i was a kid it was fucking terrifying yeah so i really like those because you're just like wow look i'm held on by that tiny little bolt up there i hope nothing yeah. goes wrong <laughs> yeah, that was exactly exactly my fear i realized like yeah the only thing holding on to these stupid fucking chains like 
but as that soon li- as little just, links of chain. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you let go of that feeling and you just enjoy like flying around in a chair and just like woo, then you know you enjoy the view of the park and I don't know. So I would uh, say that's my favorite fair ride. But yeah. Um, Rayu asks, are there any games you're looking forward to that, uh, wait, are there any games you're looking forward to playing in the future? Hell yeah. Uh, Starfield. I'm super pumped to play that. Wayfinder yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for a lot of games. Starfield. I, I haven't really looked at Wayfinder a whole lot. But uh, I'm also excited to get more into the Guild Wars 2 expansion. And I feel like there's... Hold on. I got to check my wish list really quick because I know Kombat that there's one. another game too. Oh, yes. Mortal, Mortal Kombat, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Go-Go Town is space, coming up too. Go-Go Town, Space Marine 2. Alien yep. Hominid Invasion. Excited for oh, that Oh, my one God. Too. Castle Crashers. Yeah. yeah. And, Dude, that's uh, one thing. Well, like, hey, we should... You know what? If... If Nick actually streams this week and he doesn't have a game, we should stream Castle Crashers if you guys own it. I think I do. I'm game. Maybe. I would love it, and I could let the devs know, and they could maybe we can give a copy away. And Beat Trix, uh, which wait, is Beat Tetris. How, uh... All right, if we're going to be play Castle Crashers, though, like, what's our battle cry going to be? <laughs> Waffle! <laughs> I like waffles. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working, Working Class, Class Nerds. Nerds.